Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Thrive Yoga and Wellness Podcast. My name is Jennifer Dixon, and joining me today is special Leslie. guest. Oh, sorry. You're I fine. I interrupt you. I am Leslie Gwynn. Yay, we are so excited to have you. Merritt is taking a week off to go visit a brand new grandbaby. Yes, she's Aww. a grandma now. And it's a cute, perfect little boy with the chubby cheeks everywhere. And she's so in love. She's yeah. she's. She sent me pictures and she's just so in love. Aww. I'm so excited for her. So congratulations to her yes. and her her daughter and um, this brand new grandbaby. This, is for this family. Yes. The Thrive Tribe grows. <laughs> Not for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're done. Should we're done. Yeah. So today's episode is going to be a little bit different. We are... Uh, we finished up the Yamas and the Niyamas last week with a good summary of what we've learned throughout this last two and a half months, especially because we started it before COVID and we ended it, you know, in the midst of it. And so today we are going to talk a little bit more. Leslie recently shared a story on the Thrive Yoga and Wellness blog. You can check it out at thriveyogaandwellness.com forward slash blog and you'll see all of our different um posts i guess that's what it's called blogs. Uh, blogs yes thank you i'm like what are they what are they and and you'll get to see the what we will be referring to but i wanted to bring leslie on to discuss she say she shared a very uh, i'm gonna say intimate and beautiful story but i felt felt like it was very empowering for me to read and i hope you too as a reader and listener it was very empowering for me to actually write and say too as well awesome and that is the whole practice of what this arikta in sanskrit meaning unprotected your vulnerability expressing yourself that's what it is it's the empowerment that you get from expressing your truth good or bad to move on so beautiful so the inspiration what for this was because you finished your 200 hour you're yeah you're gonna be joining the 300 hour teacher training soon yes and so this was just part of your own do you guys remember self-study the that was part of the what we went over we, we went through this was part of your own development in your own yoga practice right as you were going through these things in real life yes you were bringing it back to your mat so to speak i have to that's that's i have a lot of chaos but you know i mean everyone that knows me knows i have three boys husband who's an accountant who now has tax season extended to july the one thing that centers me and always brings me back is yoga and it's not just physical it's mental as well and that is something that i am really enjoying learning about and discovering and being able to learn about these, like the yamas and the niyamas, and these, I'm trying to think of the right word, a better way to live your life using these values. And one of them that I have read about, because the name just looked funny to me. You're like, Arika, what? Arika, Arachna. What? <laughs> a spider? What is that? You yeah. know? So I look at it and it's a riktasha and it means unprotected in Sanskrit. So, um, and then reading on about it, it's honoring your vulnerability. And a lot of people, even when I was talking to them before I even wrote the blog, were asking me, what does that mean? What is honoring your vulnerability? And if you look at it as a duality of power versus vulnerability it's not a weakness it's almost like your innocence your naivete that you keep and you want to keep that outlook but protect yourself with it as you move along in life and vulnerability the definition is the quality or state of mind of being exposed to the possibility of being attacked or harmed so in no way am I suggesting to go out in the street, you know, and wait for something bad to happen to you. But it, there's been things in my life that have happened, and everybody's lives have happened, to where it's harmful, or whether it's mental, physical, and it's set in our minds, and then we kind of tuck it way back in our minds and try and forget it, 
but when we don't bring it to the surface and we don't allow that to be shared or to even, you know, write it down. You don't have to tell it to everybody, but just speak your truth in some form. It is so empowering to get that, those thoughts that you're trying to forget because they're the still there to come forward. So it was very, in this practice of Arikdasha, you know, honoring my vulnerability and realizing so much more of my truth that I was carrying so many other people I guess generational type of things but or generational I don't say curses what's the right word Merritt wouldn't know what to say right yeah. now yeah like I was I was in a situation to where I was literally letting my mother's miss guided steps to find my life and then it was reading this and understanding what this part of learning yoga is and realizing that her truth her own life is not mine beautiful here's a question because i'm coming at this it looks like our light oh it's back we may or may not have a ghost in the house because the light is flickering on and off. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Really fun. Hey, Casper. <laughs> hey, Casper. Thanks. Maybe leave the light on for us. Yeah. <laughs> that was really strange. So apologies for the light flickering on and off. So my question for you is to this, for this, do you think perhaps, because our bodies, we talk about this a lot in yoga, mm -hmm. our bodies hold emotions and physical and emotional trauma mm -hmm. and part of the asana practice uh, the physical postures kind of can sort of not kind of it digs into that stuff you get into a hip opener you get into a heart opener holy moly um, people get emotional you know like like we tra joked about many times frog makes me want to punch people mm -hmm. so do you think it was I know that there were other things that went on personally we don't have to go into, but do you think a portion of this exploration came about because you were deepening your physical practice and Absolutely. It opened it into it? Absolutely. And even after writing, you know, this blog and, you know, sharing my truth, I was having a lot of neck and uh, shoulder, not... I just wasn't able to really do what I used to be able to do. It's almost like something was holding me back. And then since I've been able to express this, express my truth, because we do hold those emotions deep down, my shoulders and my neck are a lot, I mean, I'm back to where I could be before, you know, and That's beautiful yoga helps. And again, it's not just physical, it's, it's mindfulness too. It's, it's, it's the total mind, body, spirit connection. And once you realize that, and once you realize that it's that and everything kind of clicks together, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And it's okay if the tears come in, you know, when all that happens, it's release. Yeah, it's releasing. I, I totally agree. So before we go any deeper, do you want to share part of what you shared with our audience on the blog post? Sure. Uh, where would you like for me to start? At the very beginning, sorry, I think in Jennifer song, and I apparently. sing a lot to each other, <laughs> and you might not know the songs, but we kind of, you know, just sing whenever we can. We were just singing Hair Up from Troll, so. <laughs> because that song is always relevant, especially when the humidity is a thousand percent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, and let's see, in yoga teacher training, we were uh, two months into yoga teacher training. My dad had gotten he he was in vietnam and was suffering from agent orange related issues he passed away in november and the following year i finished yoga teacher training despite my life being just completely like a tornado just went off and yoga kept me grounded and i finished and a year after my dad passed away I did an ancestry DNA kit 
And the reason I did it, everyone's like, why did you even do it? The reason I did it is because in the census, this is a little tidbit of information for everybody out there that doesn't know. In the censuses, pre-1950, there really wasn't, from what I understand, there really wasn't any way to actually make sure that what was being sent or what was said was true. They wouldn't go back and check records. My granny, who is my dad's mom, um, is listed as Negro on the censuses. Her parents are listed as Negro and her brothers and sisters were listed as Negro, but my dad was born in 1945, up until the 1940 census, that's what it says. My dad was born in 1945 on his birth certificate. Poof, my granny is now white. And, Weird. but that is something apparently that happened often because there's no checks and balances during that time. A lot of trust was put into the, you know, American public and not that they check now, you know, Tiffany Haddish claims that she's Caucasian on her uh, census thing when they came to ask her. That's a funny story. For okay. Time. Anyways, okay. so, um, so that's what really got me interested because looking at me, <laughs> I really wanted to know and, and then I started looking back via Ancestry on like um, how far back I could trace my dad's family, which comes back to Georgia in Cartersville. Oh, very cool. But the last relative that I could find was, I couldn't find a mother or father for him, but it's his fourth great grandfather and his name was Wonder Johnson and he was a slave. So my interest is piqued. I wanted to know, you know, my dad's roots because I couldn't find them, you know, through the family trees and everything they have on there. So I did an ancestry DNA kit. Time out. I loved that name. I'm going to name my next dog Wonder Johnson because I'm not having any more children. But doesn't that like elicit like it's a rah. basketball player's name? Well, I, I think like Magic Johnson, maybe that's it. But like maybe. Wonder, yeah. Wonder's a great name. It is. Anyways, okay. So could you imagine though? I mean, how I mean, like. Bless him for whatever he had to endure in his life, but like having a name is wonder. I mean, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So, uh, so I sent off my ancestry DNA kit, and they say like, we get your kit. It's going to be six to eight weeks before you hear a result, and that's what you know everybody says. And ten days later, I get an email saying your results are in. Click Whoa. on this. And the day that I got that was actually a year to the day that my dad had passed away. Oh, wow. So, and I don't believe in coincidences. Mm -hmm. So, um, I was at the CVS picking up prescriptions for my kids. And I looked at it and, you know, I'm expecting to see my dad and my cousins and all my family. And it wasn't there. But it did list who my biological father was. And... Immediately, I thought to myself, well, someone must have sabotaged my spit. Someone must have <laughs> gone in my mailbox and put their spit in with mine, and obviously, this is a mistake. You know, like, this is definitely a mistake. So, you were kind of, like, shocked and in disbelief. Oh, I was completely in denial. You know, it's like the 12 steps you go through. And during all this, my mother was in a nursing facility and it was in North Carolina and we're in Tennessee. So it was me driving back and forth and back and forth. And I wanted to ask her about this, but you know, I wanted to make sure she was well enough to answer anything about it. She came to live with us in December and I asked her about it and she was, her and I had a really good heart to heart and she told me that this is correct. But that's what kind of triggered my just, I didn't understand anything. I didn't understand, you know, I thought I lost myself. Like I didn't, you know, my dad had passed away. He wasn't around anymore and he never did know. Um, but he, he was kind of my rock and now I had all these questions and I didn't have any answers. And in that, along with, you know, me being a mom of three children that are young and having to take care of my mom at this time. And it was just too much. But the one thing that I kept dwelling on was how angry I was for my dad. 
what would my dad have done or what, you know, how hurt he would have been. My dad's not here. And me worrying about that is a waste of time. And out of all the lessons that my dad taught me, number one, you never lie to family. That's the first. So I'm glad my dad taught me that. Number two is that out of all the Ten Commandments, out of everything you've ever been taught from any other, you know, higher up power as a teacher, you're supposed to follow rules, but none of those rules say you should be sad. You should be happy. And my dad would not be okay with me being in this just bloom that I was trying to find myself. So learning about you know, yoga, not just the physical practice, but all of the philosophy behind it. And then reading about this unprotected vulnerability that we all have and honoring that and speaking my truth, because what my mom did, that's her truth. And whatever reason that happened is none of my business. And I don't honestly really care to talk about, but like, and the blessings from it, my dad, I couldn't have asked for a better dad. And he had a great daughter. Yeah. His whole life, his whole physical experience, he had and he, the he, best daughter. He encouraged me my entire life to be unique, to to do what I love to do. He could dance. Oh, man, he could dance. I talk about how I can dance. He could dance. Like, I remember at our wedding... I told him in his ear, I like got up to him and said, you got to slow down. I can't keep up with you. <laughs> I mean, he, he could dance. And um, like he, he always encouraged me to ask more questions, to find out more, to learn more, to never stop growing and to know that out of everything, be happy, be true to yourself and be happy. So, and that's where I'm at today. And it's a lot easier now talking about it than it was because you know you go through so many emotions when you find out something like this and it took me a while to even realize that that in itself finding that out is trauma mm -hmm. and because you think trauma is physical but you know I thought you know I had lived a lie for 40 years but I hadn't I I've just lived for 40 years and this just happens to be something to help me learn to grow to be a better person and to make sure that, you know, I teach my own children wrong from right and not carry on anybody else's pain or lies or mistruths, like just honor your own. I think the beautiful thing that you just said uh, right there, you said lots of beautiful things, but something that just struck me, I was going to say something else and then that happened, but the taking responsibility like that is what you did and it wasn't this is traumatic like you said this was trauma and trauma can do some terrible stuff whether it's emotional or physical trauma gets in there and the way that you respond no matter which way you respond responding it is natural and it's and it's okay but you could either choose to just lay there and let that trauma define you or you can be like all right knocked me down it's not that this is this happened, but it doesn't define me. And it's going to this has made me be a better person. And the buck stops here. And now your boys get to grow up having that lesson instilled to them from a very young age. And that's beautiful. Yeah. And, and there's been a lot in my life and in and, and my blog post. I wrote, I'm not trying to one up anyone, but I've had a lot of traumatic events. That, I mean, I can rattle off some like our house caught on fire when I was 17. Um, you know, I've. Every, you know, everybody's got their stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. those it, defining moments. Right. You you live life, and if you don't learn something from that and carry it with you, so that you can learn, so that you can be a better person, on like the stepping stone. You know, mm -hmm. if you don't do that and you choose to dwell in that moment and find something to pacify that pain, that's kind of where addiction can come in and I've been there mm -hmm. and a lot of people have and it's hard to get out of that but 
there's so much more when you are able to realize that things that have happened to you aren't your fault and you're here for a reason mm -hmm. and you're beautiful inside and out and moving on and learning from that and being able to help others who might need to get past that, that's what's important to me. Because we could talk all day about the bad stuff that's happened in our lives. How productive is that? Exactly. You know? Mm -hmm. Or we can, you know, talk about how much we've learned or you don't even have to talk about it. You can use what you've learned to make you a stronger person to do better in the world. Yeah. And that's what is really important. So finding out that, you know, my, that my dear dad was not my biological father. It, it broke me. I mean, it, I, there were mornings I didn't want to go to sleep at night because the thoughts were keeping me awake. And in the mornings I was upset that I was awake, you know, and those are some deep, dark moments that, and depression that a lot of people have, but then realizing that nothing that I was dwelling on was productive. Nothing that I was, you know, expected of was going to magically happen. There's not fairy godmothers, you know, in the world. So it, it's up to me. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not going to do it, no one's going to do it for me. So being able to learn from even others mistakes, but being a better person and moving forward instead of staying stagnant. Yep. I think that that's a beautiful thing that also happens with a regular yoga practice, whether it's that regular meditation practice or pranayama or physical practice, you, you're going to grow. Yeah. You're going to grow. And so, cause I'm a yoga teacher, I have a yoga studio. I'm going to always come back to this physical and these, these, like these kinds of practices, but there is truth in the aspect of the more you practice, the more you're going to grow and that's going to translate and come up off of the mat, mm -hmm. which is, it seems like it has come to you. And, and it, and I love how you talked about how it manifested itself physically and you continue to practice these different truths, both physically on the mat and with your self study. And then you found this physical relief exploring all of the many facets of a, of this yoga practice, this practice we love. And there's a mantra that I, I'll probably overuse it, but I'm never going to stop using it. Whenever I teach in our classes, one of the first things I do when we set our intention is, you know, say to everybody and to myself, it's really for myself, and I hope other people enjoy it, but I am aware of that which does not serve me. And if it is not serving you in that moment, then let it go let it go. And if you're going to worry and think about what ifs and that's because we want to be able to have more control than we're allowed. Mm -hmm. And we want to go back and change past. We can't do that. We have to be present and we have to work towards the future and having that and knowing what is serving you and what is not. And if it's not helping you in that moment, whether it be yoga or you're trying to, you know, do something you don't need to be doing physically right <laughs> you know it's it's something that you have to carry with you and it's important to know that if it's not helpful if it's not these thoughts whatever it is let it go so that you can focus on you and you can move forward exactly well I think that was an awesome awesome lesson high five Thank you so much for joining us. Again, my name is Jennifer Dixon. And I'm Leslie Gwynn. We're with Thrive Yoga and Wellness. You can find us at thriveyogaandwellness.com. Leslie teaches yin and meditation for us on Mondays at... 7.45. 7.45. And then right now, while we are still streaming classes, she is also teaching Thursdays at 10 and Saturdays at 11.30. Yeah. When we open back up, the schedule is... 
Still TBD. Yeah. We'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll when figure it, it out. But you'll be able to find more. And if you'd like to talk with Leslie directly, you can find her. Do you want to send, give them your, the Thrive email? Sure. The Leslie at thriveyogaandwellness.com. Or you can find her. What are your social handles? So um, on Instagram, it's Chattanooga Leslie. My, my name is spelled a little different. It's L-E-S-L-E-I-G-H, like Leslie. And um, but Chattanooga Leslie, and then inst on Facebook, it's just Leslie Gwynn, G U I N N. So, and if there's a lot, there's a lot of people that have been through or are going through what I just found out. And there's a Facebook group that I belong to actually, and it includes 8,000 members. Wow! So, this is a lot, this is not anything that's just like you know, this happens a lot more often apparently than you would think. But if anybody, you know, would like to reach out, I am more than happy to speak to anyone that I might be able to be of some help to. But just know that work on today and then know that you are better for it and plan towards the future. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. You can find us here on YouTube as well as every major podcast platform. I can't wait to see you again next Wednesday. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.